Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 302. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Micah fisher Kirshner. Micah uh, is based uh, near Silicon Valley in the west coast of the USA. Um, he's a, um, a regular on the uh, public speaking circuit, or no, he's, he's quietened down a bit these days. Um, he's head of SEO for Turn River Capital in, in the United States. And... Um, as I said, based on the, the West Coast uh, of the USA. All right, um, William Rock uh, is based in Kansas uh, in the USA, and uh, he's proud to call himself an SEO. He's also a Google top contributor on the Google Web Search and Webmasters uh, community. Did I get that right, William? Yeah, uh, not so much on the Webmasters, but I do a lot of Webmasters in search. Yeah, cool. David Rosam is a, a copywriter of 30 odd years standing and an SEO copywriter for 12. Um, he's an internet marketer based on the uh, south coast of um, the UK, uh, um, East Sussex, I think. And Masataki, no? No, you're muted, uh, David. Oh, good. Sorry. Oh, completely wrong. Um, other way, I said West Sussex. West Sussex, okay. Yes. Um, anyway, that's much too much um, interruption for that. Please, please get on. And you can find David at writingforseo.org or um, davidrosen.com or davidrosen.com. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based uh, in the UK, in Wimbledon. And um, he uh, is also a Google top contributor on the AdSense community. All right, let's um, look at um, what we have here tonight. Um, the first question is from David Gaskin. It's titled, Should I Allow Everyone to Link to My Site? Um, he said, I got a comment on one of my blog posts that seems like they legitimately read my article. Towards the end of the comment, they talk about including it in one of their articles and link to the article using the article title as the anchor text. I reviewed the, the target site and it's got a very low domain authority um, but the domain has been around for 13 years or so. Additionally, it doesn't seem uh, very heavy on content, although it is industry related. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not I should approve this comment. Um, will it do more good than bad for my SEO? Thanks. So intrinsically, comments are usually you know, followed on their own. Um, and a one-off comment being moderated and allowed in is not going to be uh, a set negative to your site. Uh, if we're talking at scale, and there are a lot of, let's say, sketchy kind of comments, then yeah, that could be potentially harmful to uh, individual pages. Um, or domains, depending on how severe it is. But generally, just one comment, not an issue to worry about. Yeah, I mean, I I have the habit of actually linking to something that's really well uh, well written or something that's in my interest that I feel others probably could get benefit from it. Um, so if it's an in industry thing, it's probably going to be no indexed. It's not going to be really counted. I think if there's a whole bunch of that going on, then yeah, maybe, but. I don't know if I'd worry about it. I think Google's smart enough to figure, figure that one out. But links, if people want to actually send you links, that's good. That's possibly helpful for their visitors. 
Thank you, William. Uh, thank you, Micah. All right. Um, any other comments before we move on for this one for David? All right. Uh, look, I, I do want to call out people like uh, Michael Stricker, uh, Dave Elliott, Michael Martinez, Stellwart to uh, answer questions uh, on uh, our communities uh, on Google Plus and Facebook. Uh, through the week, questions are asked uh, every day, and uh, guys like uh, these people uh, turn up to, to answer them. That's appreciated, and we thank them very much. Right, let's move on to number two on our run list. It's from Cassie Richardson. Um, it's titled Expanding Business to Another Area Without a Physical Location. Um, she goes on to say it's a schema question. Um, she says, I have a client uh, who offers catering services. They cater at specific venues, say four or five. They have issues with optimising for those locations since they don't have a physical presence there. They're working on adding content uh, to the site and utilising their partnerships for better representation on their site, the link building, etc. She said, I'm wondering if there's uh, any food establishment or service schema that would be good to add to their catering services page something that would call out to the fact that they cater in this area at these locations. Does, does anyone know of something like that or have any recommendations? Yeah, Michael makes a good point on that. I don't think that uh, schema is going to be useful in this case. I think that maybe having a page on the site it's service that area and so you're talking about the areas in general that you cater in uh, for and maybe even talking about uh, people that you've worked with uh, projects photos uh, there's other things you can do to reference that on your main website but schema I don't think is going to be able to take advantage of that especially if there's not a physical location that you're always at thank you William Oh, we're losing Michael Fisher Kirshner. Um, ho hopefully, we'll see him again shortly. Okay. Um, anybody else on this one? Yeah, I don't, I don't th think there's any particular schema, uh, not that I'm aware of, that does this particular thing. Um, yes, I, th I think you're, as, as, as William says, I think you're faced with uh, creating some appropriate. Um, appropriate page content um yes don't get caught up in uh, building a load of doorway pages though you know make these valuable make these unique um and yeah talk you know talk about what you're doing in each of the areas um you know i i don't know um you know, maybe you can maybe you can talk about the particular kind of food you have at particular locations, or the people, or whatever. You know, uh, is is there some some kind of cultural thing here? You know, like if you go to a, go to a football or a rugby match in the UK, you expect to have a pie. Um, <laughs> so you know, there's the, the think think about think about the people you're you're catering to. Or your client is catering to, um, and uh, think think about how um, how you might be um, helping them or the um, or, or, or the owners of the venues who obviously want to cater to them. And I mean, cater in the the uh, <laughs> the broadest sense. God, uh, cater is a is a wrong word to use here. Anyway, uh, provide food or um, or help them in the broadest sense um anyway uh yeah uh, as i say it's, it's i don't i don't think it's a um a uh, uh a case of um of schema or um or anything of that ilk okay right i think before i wander off into the the undergrowth and talk about something even more um irrelevant uh i'll stop are you fine <laughs> <laughs> 
I was just about to wander off into the undergrowth, I can tell you. <laughs> okay. But thank you, William. All right. The, the next one is from Chris Castillo. It's titled A Non Standard Nav Tag. Uh, Chris said, Here's a dumb question. Uh, mega menus are a trend, but most page builders uh, let you create a navigation element and then build out a mega menu using a drag and drop interface that uses a, a, a bunch of ampersand, ta ampersand tags. I think that's what he means. Um, are menus like this uh, less optimised than a standard uh, with the... Um, Uh, I'm not actually getting what he means, but anyway, tags to implement the list of uh, menu options. I would assume that anything within a tag would be characterized by search engines as uh, navigation elements, um, but I would also think that elements would give uh, search engines more context about how the pages are related. Then again, they have the sitemap and their own crawling data to determine context. So. Not sure how important that is. Um, I'm thinking it's not a big deal given the search engines have dramatically improved their crawling and understanding of modern web trends and technologies. Your thoughts? Um, less optimised or no difference? Yeah, I think uh, Google's going to be able to pick that apart. I think it goes back to your user experience. If it's going to be helping get your visitor through to those proper pages quickly and uh, effectively. I mean, I've seen a lot of well-designed um, mega menus. I mean, you go to Porsche, uh, Porsche especially, Porsche.com, and they've got a fantastic way that they've put together that mega menu. Um, now, of course, that's probably a huge team of programmers actually customizing that for them. but. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of drag and drop tools I, I've even used and uh, found that yeah, it does add a lot of additional code, but uh, depending on, you know, going back to your speed of your page, looking at uh, is there any errors in that code, uh, you can do the inspect. So in, in Chrome, inspect the code, see if there's any errors when it's crawling. But I wouldn't really spend too much time make sure it's clean though user experience is going to be key watch how their people are going through it david do you have anything to add to that no um, the question seems to be that if you have a nav element um if you use ul and li so you create the list <coughs> whether that would be more meaningful or less um, comprehensible to search engines. And I think, I suppose it's, that's unlikely. If you're going to relate, just to, to establish relationships between different pages and the hierarchy of pages, then you probably want to use the breadcrumbs um, rather than the mega menu. Um, I don't think lists will help on their own. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Mikey, you're back. Elijah's school must be uh, very close uh, to your house. Huh? No, okay. All right, let's uh, move on to uh, number four on our run list. It's from Nilesh uh, Azair. It's titled The Frequency of Backlinks. Nilesh said, hey, guys, I have a small question for you. What is the frequency of backlinks? Um, brackets daily, alternate daily, alternate day, half weekly, weekly, uh, and density um, of backlinks, one, two, three, to any number of backlinks for landing pages. Uh, 
Um, is, is this a question about what frequency we should be aiming for when we're building backlinks, in which case we're, um, we're slap bang into the uh, topic that's come up time after time over the past few weeks, that uh, building backlinks is something that belongs back with the arc. It isn't something you should do at the moment, um, and it probably won't be the thing that you should do for the foreseeable future either. Um, if this is a question that says, that's asking what is the frequency of backlinks in this particular tool, um, I don't know. I don't know which tool it is. Um, I have a feeling it's probably the former, um, and in which case, um, build content, make friends with your marketplace, and hopefully they will say that your content is good enough and give you the backlinks you need. But don't go out and build them, whatever you do. And I'm sure that William Rock's got lots to say about it because he's <laughs> now our back, backlinks guru, both of them are guru. And I don't know why I started on this anyway, because he's the man. No, no, David, you did fantastic. <laughs> I think, you know, you're... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's hard to answer that question because this was a question somebody would be asking uh, many, many years ago uh, because that was the thing uh, to do, which was, you know, get get links with you know, proper anchor text with keywords in, inside of them. And and uh, Google would find them and find that you were more relevant for that term. And uh, if I, I would probably suggest going out and doing a little reading. Uh, search engine journal is probably a good resource to just look at that or even type in the word uh, Google Panda or sorry Google Penguin uh, algorithm and there's a lot of information about the question that you've just asked that uh, may solidify a little bit better answer uh, I, I personally think that you know, go back out and look at your website in general and I wouldn't focus on the backlinks they'll eventually come like David said, find some friends in that industry. They're, you know, if, if your content is worthwhile, they're going to be talking about you. Um, and that's a, that's a natural pattern. Michael uh, Martinez actually mentions a good thing here. And, you know, there's some pages only get 10 links over their entire lifespan. And so that's more of a natural pattern that Google's going to look for automatically in their algorithm. And so if I was to say, okay, their pattern is one link per day, or don't max out 10 links per week, then that's, that's old stuff. Uh, that's, that's actually doing link building that you don't necessarily need to do. And I think John Mueller did come out recently and talked about, you know, if you're link building, it's still, uh, you know, even though they're quality links, I guess that's still against their terms of service. Uh, or Google guidelines. So I wouldn't focus on that. You know, it's build a good quality site. If you've got a good quality site, you know, in, enhance that quality site with better content. Look at your analytics. Look at what else you can uh, build that's probably more sustainable. Well, hope that helps. Yeah. <clears throat> Figure out um, what would make people talk about your article um, and um, why they would reference uh, your site in something that they publish. Figure that, that out and, and you've got it all covered. Um, I never, I, I was never able to. David, have you ever figured that out? Muted again. Yeah, I know I'm muted again. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. Anyway, um, yes, uh, as I say, I, I, I think I think there's something of a, a conversation to be had here. We talk a lot about conversations um, in internet or digital marketing. It, it's some, something that's almost become meaningless. We talk about conversations, but if you if you build up um, if you build up a community, you build up relationships with people, 
they're more likely to see your uh, your your article and see it in a good light. Um, that's you know that that's what I found. It, it, it there is a, a kind of personal thing that you can get get going. Um, the you know it, I'm not saying that you 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 do this go go and have a cup of coffee with them because they may well be over in um, wherever in the US of A, whereas uh, I'm in the UK. So it, it's yeah, it, it's 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 this this idea of how reliable you are as a an expert um you know are, are you someone that that they can trust are they someone who's uh, are, are you someone who are the, who they are happy to recommend uh, their article to do they believe that you are being straightforward truthful legal no not legal um legal is truthful no um being truthful and expert about this is your um, is your opinion one that they're happy to 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 pin their colours to? Um, so if you're just writing in a, in a vacuum, um, I think that's that's difficult because you've got to really hit it on the nail with someone if they're going to just recommend you without without having any other um, any other relationship with you or any other knowledge of you. No good point. Yeah, it's something that I did completely by accident um, uh, around about the turn of the century, about two thousand and two or something like that. But um, for some reason or other, uh, this, this was about the time that Mandela was uh, being released, and um, for some reason or other, I um, had a rush of blood to the head and. Uh, I, I put a bar across the site and put a series of Mandela quotes um, on the pages. And, yeah, because I just thought Mandela, what a fabulous man, uh, what a wonderful man uh, he was. And I, was, uh, I thought I'd give him the prime real estate on a commercial site. And I got hundreds of links where people would write, you know, what are they doing there? You know, what, what you know, and the SEOs would write, you know, what, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, it worked. I mean, it was a complete accident. I, w I was genuinely uh, giving up part of our re screen real estate to Mandela. Anyway. Right. Our next question uh, is from Living Gratitude. Yeah, there's a name. Um... It's titled Copying and Publishing the Same Content from Another Source. Um, it's from our uh, uh, SEO, SEO Questions group on Google+. Um, Living Gratitude said, Dear all, I have a query and would request, request you to please guide me on this. I wish to create a blog in which I'll be publishing all of the articles slash news are in the pharma sector uh -oh, uh, that's published in big newspapers. That means I'll be searching for pharma news in newspapers like the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Times of India, Economic Times, etc. And we'll be copying, copying and publishing the same content on my blog daily. So what steps should I take so that Google lists my blog and gives me some ranking. Who's got the bad news for living gratitude? Don't oh. do it. <laughs> 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 Don't all rush. <laughs> yeah. No, this, I mean, what, what living gratitude is, doing is essentially massive copyright <laughs> infringement so no that that's absolutely no go um, especially as many newspapers are behind paywall um, you know you are depriving newspapers of their revenue um, so it's business ethically and legally um, absolutely non non-starter you know forget about the idea don't do it yeah, and you won't get ranking at all out of it um, because of those reasons. 
and that you're not actually adding any value to it. That information is available from all the primary sources. Um, what the, there is a question of the paywall, but let's assume that there's no paywall. Um, if you're merely collecting it, if you're merely sticking, in effect, a load of RSS feeds onto a website, you're adding no value whatsoever, and Google will ignore it. So you've got a uh, you've got a Google reason and a legal reason uh, for thinking up another business idea. I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, and um, I mean, the big media companies that um, have been around a while, they, 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 they know about this sort of stuff and, and they have the, the DMCA process uh, uh, automated. Um, it's, it's a sure way to kill your site. Um, anyway. And they'll know about it pretty quickly. There's tools that they're using to scrub the web for mentions. So when somebody mentions the New York Times, uh, that automatically gets solicited in their daily you know, collection of who's mentioned them, and somebody's going through that list and, and verifying that that's something that they want to be mentioned. And that, Jim, you made a good point about the DMCA. You know, they're, those are automatic for them, I'm sure, because they do it so people are copying so often. Yeah. What does DMCA stand for? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I'll have to Google it. Digital Millennium Copyright Act, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Digital Millennium co Copyright oh. isn't it? Yeah, oh, maybe it is. Yeah. I said something like that. <laughs> Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And uh, normally what they're going to be doing is a DMCA takedown request. Is what, yeah. what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, according to uh, Bing, um, it's um, uh, not, uh, 1998 uh, United States copyright law that implements two 1996 treaties of the World Intellectual Property Organization. All right, that'll do. Anyway, that's enough for living gratitude. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, this one from Karim Aziz. Uh, it's titled, Does trying to rank for 2019 terms in advance have any merit? Uh, Karim uh, said, um, went on to say, say, for example, right now I could rank for um, the best da, 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 of 2019 in any niche because the big boys and authority sites haven't touched this yet. I'm assuming that once December and January rolls around, I'll get outranked left and right. Uh, but I also believe that click-through ratio has an impact on rankings. And if I can get enough clicks on my pages, I could hold steady. What do you guys have to say about this? Hmm. Well, sorry. No, no. Carry, carry on, William. Uh, no, I was just going to touch upon the, the click through rate for a second. Mm -hmm. that, that part that is. Going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can write out there at 2019 and start to rank for certain things, but then you know, really in your right in your uh, idea about you know, yeah, the big boys are going to outrank you, uh, but it all depends on the query. So best of you know uh, what is going to determine who else is going to be competing with that word anyways, and are they more relevant with their content than you might be just because you have 2019 doesn't necessarily give you the game changer for it. Uh, but there's definitely ways you can do, do things for, for getting that uh, you know, different, what's, what's happening, what's, what are the, the hot events for New Year's 2019? Um, so basically when people are putting together a party list, they're, yeah, they're gonna have a page that has a lot of things that are going on pre-2019. Back to the click-through rate, ratio thing, there's a lot of people out there that are saying, oh, because I've got the click-through, I'm going to keep this rank. 
well, there's, as Google has pointed out multiple times, that there is not just one or two factors in the way that they rank a website. Otherwise, it would be super easy to do uh, for any niche. Uh, but there are so many different pieces that nobody really knows if that's going to get the best um, response and get the top ranking. But I wouldn't focus necessarily just on the clicks. Back to your quality of your page, uh, the, the legitimacy of your, your theme of the site, and your authoritativeness. Have, has the site been around for a while? Well, David, what are you thinking? Ah, uh, yes, what was I thinking? Um, yeah, I, I was thinking that um, I don't believe that CTR has impact on rankings. Um, so um, the one of the premises here are uh, is uh, not right from my point of view. Um, the the other um the other end the the best of 2019 as you said uh william is is best of what you know if you're going to do i don't know the best suv of 2019 um you're going to be up against some pretty big hitters if it's the uh um the the best uh the 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 best whatever it is to do with a particular breed of tropical fish fin, then perhaps you're going to do very well as to whether you'll get any traffic from it is another matter. Um, so this isn't this isn't some kind of um, carte blanche for ranking well during 2019 by by starting now. Um, these things are never simple. Um, Again, as, as William said, it's not just one thing. You've got to be, you've got to be convincing to Google across a whole load of variables and over a period of time too. Uh, there's there's a an amount of trust. There's an amount of value in a brand that uh, that can help you rank for these things because of what you've proved yourself to be. Now, I'm not saying that you haven't proved yourself. I don't know. I don't know what your website is, but I'm assuming that this is something fairly, well, it's a, it's a personal uh, uh, site for you. And I I'm, I'm don't think I would go, uh, go down that route with one of my personal sites because I don't think it would work. Um, Give it a go if you've got some time to uh, to spare, but I don't think it's going to work. And <laughs> if you look at travel and fashion industries, for example, you know, you've already missed the bus, as it were, or the boat, because there are loads of articles about the hot things in 2019, fashion trends in spring 2019. Places to go on holiday, on vacation in 2019. Those things are out there now, and you have to be pretty good to rank in those sectors. And there will be others as well, which you know we'll look forward, um, you know, five six months ahead, because yeah. that's the cycle, that's the business cycle. So, um, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's it's a viable strategy unless you really know something and have that knowledge and can say with confidence that this is what's going to be important, hot, um, fashionable in 2019. Otherwise, you know, look at your own content and see what best describes that content. And if you did a Google search currently for just 2019, or, yeah, 2019, you'd actually see that they have over 2 billion results. That's a lot of results. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, and I can't remember the last time that I put in to, uh, the year into a search because 
as Google gets uh, towards a, a staler and staler index, which is one of the reasons why I like being better these days. Um, it, it's um, uh, less likely to have um, those um, in a result. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right, Jim, because then you'd have, like I just typed in, parties near me 2019. Right, first thing that shows up is going to be, so if uh, 500 million results for sure, but near me indicates location around my area. So automatically it tells me that the New Year's Eve event party tickets and celebrations for Kansas City. No. It gets smarter. It's not just 2019. What's the question? Yeah. All right. Um, thank you, David. Thank you, William. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. All right, let's go to the next. JL Faverio, who's asked a number of questions of us, and we thank him for his interest. JL Faverio said, does Craigslist hold any SEO value for local businesses anymore? In the United States, I haven't really seen much at all. Uh, you'll see maybe once in a while if i've actually i'm looking for a specific item and it's a very rare and not really talked about item maybe and it happens to be on craigslist but for the most part you're going to find amazon uh, for that kind of stuff for products or even the google google shop but for local businesses it depends on what local product you're selling so if you've got a plumbing service Craig's list is probably not going to be your best pet. It'd probably be Angie's list. So. Thank you, William. Anybody else? All right. So I see Shane Evil said that I used to be able to post on Craig's list and would be on the first page within 12 hours. Uh, he's going to try uh, just to see, and let's see what happens. So yeah, I wouldn't would yeah. disregard it. I, mean, I, I wouldn't regard Craigslist in any way because it's got its own audience. Uh, it's almost like its own search engine on its own. Um, so you may end up getting some good benefit of the local business sales, but as far as SEO, I don't. I haven't seen it. I, I, but it's worth a try for sure. Yep. Okay. Let's go to the next. Oh, it's that time again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus and also the dumb uh, SEO questions Facebook group. We'll be back um, next week um, to do this all again. But uh, in the meantime, um, thank you for watching. Your, your interest in what we do makes uh, what we do worthwhile. And for that, we are truly grateful. All right. Um, I'll press the stop button and hopefully it'll work uh,